Nate252 here with another Star Citizen lore video. And with the recent CitizenCon reveal of Planetside, I thought it appropriate for my first system-related lore video to be focused on the system featured in the demonstration, the Stanton system. Even without the inevitable human intrusion, Stanton is an anomaly. Boasting four inhabitable super-Earths, the system is, from a cosmological perspective, unusual. Strictly speaking, star systems as purely inhabitable as Stanton simply do not exist. Only a limited terraforming was required, and the divergent ecologies on Stanton's four worlds are still a significant interest to scientists of all stripes. No one is sure exactly who first settled the Stanton system. All indication are that it was discovered by a free agent trader and word spread of its potential riches. By the time the UEE noticed the system's existence, all four planets had populations numbering in the tens of thousands. With four rare, relatively unclaimed super-Earths at their hands, the Empire quickly declared Stanton to be a case of eminent domain, and began guarding nearby jump points. Without formal colonization papers on file, the existing inhabitants had little choice when facing a Bengal-class carrier. The dreams the UEE had with Stanton soon faded with a down economy in the midst of a hundred-year colonization drought. Small amounts of terraforming were conducted, a series of underfunded military outposts were established, and then Stanton sat unwatched for another generation. Megacorporations were then contacted to offer the planets to the highest bidders. The winning companies were Microtech, Hurston Dynamics, Arc Corp, and Crusader. The megacorporations moved in slowly but surely. Over the years, the system became fully corporatized and the initial settlers had often, literally, been driven underground. Only those working for the corporation come to live in the Stanton system, inhabiting orderly company towns. Here are some quick facts about each of the planets. Stanton 1, Microtech, is a largely and generally cold planet due to an error in the original terraforming. It's a main supplier of Moby Glass, all forms of electronics can be found here, including advanced sensor technologies, and space is leased to smaller companies, including competitors. Stanton 2, Hurston. The ecosphere has largely been destroyed and indigenous life has been killed by industrialization. It manufactures many reliable weapons and munitions, and they utilize cheap labor and only have year-long contracts. Stanton 3, Arc Corp, which was seen in the planet side demo. The planet is entirely integrated into construction and holds none of its natural origins. They focus on fusion engine production in bulk. Anyone can lease property on our corp, and scientists have dubbed it the closest UEE planet to a Jean factory world. Stanton IV, Crusader. The, the planet is largely gas with a planet-like core, where only the high altitude is breathable. Because of this, a latticework of floating platforms was constructed, where most of the housing and factorization takes place. Because of this arrangement, the ability to make large ships in open air, versus typically in space, saves about 40% on the back end. Today, Stanton is a great place to travel if you are interested in purchasing from several of the galaxy's most successful corporations, or if you want to make a profit shipping for them. And that's all I have on the Stanton system for now. But I have more Star Citizen lore coming, so make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.